This is the 2022 Santa Cruz, and today we're gonna to tell you all about what you need to know about Hyundai's latest adventure vehicle. Plus, we're gonna answer that big question. Is it or is it not a truck? So let's get started because I feel like there's some weather coming in. The Santa Cruz that you are looking at here is a Canadian spec ultimate trim. Now in Canada, we have three trim levels. We have the preferred, we have the trend, and the top of the line ultimate. But one thing they all share are all Canadian models come with the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine and they come standard with all wheel drive. If you're in the US, you have more trim levels and more options. You can order it with just front wheel drive. You can get that naturally aspirated 2.5 liter. So make sure you check your local website. Uh, this ultimate would be the same as the limited all wheel drive in the US. The Santa Cruz is based off of the new 2022 Hyundai Tucson, but actually it shares no panels from the Tucson. It does have a very similar front grille design as that new Tucson where the lights are integrated right into uh, this chrome grille here. The difference though is the Santa Cruz has three vertical lights and the Tucson actually has four, but very, very similar looking. Shape-wise, this has a more rounded look. It's not as angular as that new Tucson. Standard, you get LED headlamps and you get LED tail lamps. Onto the side, this Ultimate gets 20 inch wheels where all the other models get 18 inch wheels. I'd say if you're going to actually be taking this off the pavement more often, then the 18 inch would probably be better. You probably have a, a larger sidewall. It might protect your rims a little bit better and give you a little bit uh, more of a comfy, cushiony ride on the rough stuff. Around the wheel wells, you do have some plastic fender cladding here and it has that same geo shape as you find throughout the entire vehicle from the grill on here and in the back as well. When you get past this B pillar, that's where it gets a little bit different for sure than the Tucson. These doors are much shorter than the Tucson. We'll look inside in a second. And then behind, of course, is the biggest difference because you actually have a bed. Dimension wise, it is different than the Tucson being that it is longer. The wheelbase is longer. It's higher and it's wider than the Tucson. I'll leave the specs right here for you to check it out. Here are the LED tail lamps that we were talking about. They are different than the Tucson. They're very, very stylish. I like how they are two piece that runs right into the tailgate. Uh, then you have the bumper. You have that same geo shape there. Built in bumper steps, by the way. This also has the tow hitch on it. Now, all vehicles in Canada come with the 2.5 turbo and they're all all wheel drive, as we mentioned, meaning this has a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds. Later on, we're actually going to hook a trailer up to this and actually try it out. Now, this tailgate has a very nice dampened effect. You can either control it with the handle here or with the key fob. So it does have a power release. So if you just hold here, down it comes. Nice and dampened. How do you like that? This tailgate is also adjustable. You can hold it into the middle position if you want, uh, because this can actually turn into a two layer bed uh, if you choose. Now here is a hard tonneau cover. This is included, is integrated into the vehicle itself. There's a strap here, not to actually pull it back. So if you want to release it, there it is. Super easy. If you want to bring it back, you just bring it back. Now there's also a midpoint where you can actually just lock it halfway. For instance, let's just say you want half of it open, you have uh, some large plants or something or trees you're carrying, you can have it sticking up or you can close it entirely. Now, so much utility in the back of this bed. First of all, you have rail system with clamps, you have LED lamps that can come on automatically if you'd like. Then you have under bed storage. Lift that up, the lights come on right there. You have this tub, 
It has a drain in it, so if you want to put muddy things in there, you need to hose it off, or you want to use it as a cooler, you can do that as well. Uh, very similar to like the Honda Ridgeline. It's not quite as deep as the Ridgeline though, but it's very nice and it's lockable. So nice lockable dry storage in the back. Plus you have all the storage in the bed itself. On both sides, you'll find extra storage pockets here. On the right side, you'll see there is an actual AC outlet with 150 watt maximum wattage there. It'd be nice to have that a little bit more if you're using this camping. Some of the devices you might, may use might be more than 150 watts. Maybe you want to bring your coffee maker or something like that. The bed length with the tailgate closed is 1,323 millimeters, and that's basically about four foot four around there. And of course, when you open up the tailgate, you have that extended room. In the bed, you'll see there are these molded cutouts here, and what that's for, you can put planks of wood there to actually create a dual shelf system. And this will fit a four by eight piece of plywood in here when you have that set up like that. So that's where the adjustable tailgate would come in handy. You would put that halfway up, your plywood would come straight across and you'd have to strap it over, but it will fit a four by eight piece. That's pretty cool. They really have thought about everything for utility for this Santa Cruz from those bumper steps. These top rails here, very, very rugged. You have no issue standing on it. Uh, maybe you're standing on it to adjust. Maybe you have a bike rack on the, on the roof here. Uh, just use that as a step there. Zero issue there. Another great thing of the integrated tonneau cover is, it's a hard cover, is that it will hold up to 220 pounds and it's great having a nice flat hard surface to work on you can put camera gear on it you can take your drone and use it as a landing pad if you're out in the wilderness there's so many possibilities with this or it's just nice to have as a table eat your lunch you have a sliding rear window if you need to communicate with someone back there if you just want some a little extra air and also the payload capacity is so impressive 732 kilograms that's 1600 pounds for this small utility vehicle that's very very impressive and this also has a self-leveling suspension when you have a lot of weight in it as well and of course, there are a ton of accessories available now and of course in the future from third parties. Here are some examples of what other things you can do with your Santa Cruz. What you get on the inside of the Santa Cruz is pretty well what you get for the new 2022 Tucson. You have this open concept design. They've kept everything nice and low. So right in front of the driver on this Ultimate, you get a 10.25 inch screen for your instrument uh, gauge. If you go into the, the trend, you also get that screen. What's nice, you have great visibility. They've kept it nice and low. You got these beautiful flowing lines. It cascades right into the center like a waterfall, just like the Tucson. The Ultimate gets a 10.25 inch screen. Standard is an eight inch touch screen. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard on all trims though. Nice thing about this 10.25 inch screen uh, in behind the steering wheel on this Ultimate is you get the blind spot monitor as well. So when you actually turn your signal on, on the left or right, you have a camera on the mirrors and it shows you what's in your blind spot. I mentioned this on the Tucson review that we did. I'm not a big fan of this piano black touch panel here. I want buttons. I want knobs. So there is no volume knob and this black, you do see dust. Uh, it, it gathers up pretty good. So you always have to kind of have a, have a cloth close by to just wipe it down. But the screen is extremely clear. The cameras are excellent. This has a bird's eye view 360 camera as well. All Santa Cruz's come standard with heated front seats and steering wheel. If you go into the trend, which is the mid trim, you get leather. Uh, and if you go into the ultimate, you get the leather, but they're heated and ventilated as well. You do not get heated seats in the rear on any of the trims though. In the middle, you have your conventional shifter. In behind that, you have your drive terrain selector, and then you have a toggle in the middle that toggles which you want for your terrain or your drive select. And you have auto hold for electric parking brake. Everything is very well laid out. It's easy to get in here and just use everything. While the front is pretty well identical to the new Tucson, the rear of the Santa Cruz is a little bit different. We mentioned this does have shorter length doors. It is a little bit shorter back here in terms of leg room, but if I sit properly, the seat 
is set to where I would be for driving. I'm five foot eleven, slowly shrinking though, but uh, still around five eleven. There is plenty of foot room. My knees are not touching the front seat at all. These seats do not recline, by the way. It feels like a nice position right now. Now, in terms of headroom, if you compare it to some of the competitors like the, the Maverick from Ford or the Honda Ridgeline, this is class leading in terms of headroom. If you compare it to hip room and shoulder room to those competitors, it's very, very comparable. Now, this middle seat, there is nothing that folds down here for an armrest or a drink holder. You have integrated cup holders in the door pocket here. If you go into the middle, it is raised up a little bit, the cushion here, uh, and there is a small hump in the middle. Above that, you have two type A USBs, so good for connectivity. You also have two air vents for the rear seats, which I'm a huge fan of. When I'm back here, I want air. If I want more, I can open that sliding rear window. On the back of the front seats, you do have seat back pockets to put your knickknacks or your tablets, your phone there. And uh, one different thing of the Santa Cruz, these seats flip up. And when you flip up, you actually get some under seat storage here. So always loving more storage. There is no storage behind the seats though. Pricing for the Santa Cruz starts at $38,499 for the preferred. Then you get to the trend package, which is $41,399, only $2,900 more. I think this is the one to get if you don't want to get the top of the line for sure because you get a lot of value for under $3,000 more. And the top of the line ultimate comes in at $44,799, so under $45,000. I remember these are Canadian trim levels, meaning they all come with standard all-wheel drive, the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine, the more powerful one, and the standard hard tonneau cover. So is this new Santa Cruz a pickup truck or not? The verdict, it is not a truck. And Hyundai isn't actually marketing or claiming that it is a truck. So what is it and who is it for? Well, the compact crossover SUV market is so popular. And just think of this as another option. Perhaps you're in the market uh, for a vehicle like a Tucson, yet your lifestyle is a little bit more active or you need uh, an open bed vehicle like this. Say you want to pick up plants or you're a scuba diver or you're a skier, bicyclist, motocross. Um, Throw, it, throw everything in the back there, your hockey gear. It's actually so much safer uh, back there as well. Take it from me that uh, as an SUV owner that has packed my SUV to the gills in the back uh, for camping or picnic outing or outdoor outing. And seriously, if something ever happened, you know, some of that stuff is gonna fly around. It's definitely not as safe as having it nice and secure in a dedicated bed like this. This could be one of those instances where I've just realized that I needed something I didn't even know that I needed. You know what, it's just, it's so handy having that open bed with that lockable tonneau cover. It really is, and I could see this so handy for day-to-day -day use. So make sure to stay tuned though, because part two is coming up where we actually take the Santa Cruz on the road, maybe even a little off-road, but more importantly, we're actually going to test its towing capability. So stay tuned for that. Like and subscribe if you liked the video. We'll see you on the next Everyday Review. Thanks, safe driving.